movies are moving pictures. With Skia being a 2D drawing API, you could draw your diagram onto your screen and then reprint it a number of times with reprint the whole canvas a number of times with changing the X and Y coordinates and that would create a beautiful smoother animations. Hi, I'm Saurav Ganguly and in this video, we would be talking about Skia with Reanimated. In the previous video, we spoke about how to create different kinds of shapes with the drawing API. And now in this video, we would also try to animate those shapes over the screen and throughout the screen, right? Uh, so let's get started. I'll introduce you to some of the basic components that Reanimated provides. Also components that Skia would provide for your better animations, including mixing of your colors, which we would usually do with interpolation. For example, here we have used shared value, use shared value, which is to maintain a reference to mutable data that can be read and modified securely across the thread. So when JS manipulates a data, that would also be reflected on your UI thread so that there would not be a lot of asynchronous in nature. This, I guess, comes with the React, Nat React Native Reanimated 2 library. Also, we have the use shared value effect. So whenever there is some changes in your use shared data, use, use shared value, that would actually trigger a re-render or redrawing of the whole canvas that has been drawn on the screen with uh, the canvas API. So a skia value can be said as a value, can be seen as a state in the library where a change will trigger a reprint request on the canvas component where we where it is used, right? And this has a lot more values such as clock values and computed values. So for example, computed values, this computed value will only be computed after a certain dependencies comes in and those dependencies are used in the computed value to compute the next value that would be used by the animations or by Skia itself. And for animations in reanimated, we come with with timing. I will be using with timing in this. Now this starts an animation based on timing. The arguments it takes is to which value this would be animated to the animation, the arguments. Now with timing takes an argument to value. So where would this component would reach out to at certain point of time? Now this also takes uh, certain options on itself. For example, uh, duration and easing. By default, the duration would be 300, but you can also define the duration on its own, of your own. You can define how long a component would take from going from a certain point to a certain point that you have defined in two values. And also the easing of, uh, component that defines the animation of a component starting from one point and how it would animate reaching to one point. So it does not look stale, right? And we will also be using with repeat. This will repeat a provided animation in a number of times. We can also define how many times an animation should be repeated over the time. The arguments that this with repeat would take is animation itself, what the animation is, number of times this animation should be repeated, uh, This should this animation be reversed? Because for example, a ball going from one end to other end, should this animation be reversed, the ball getting from the end to the starting point or the repeating should just be from uh, the starting to end and again from starting to end, right? And it also takes a callback function and this callback function will be executed when uh, the repetition has completed or when the repetition is cancelled at certain point of time. Now that we are done with this, we can start with the code itself. In the code, I have used certain import statements. For example, the canvas where the images will be drawn, where your diagram will be drawn, a rounded rectangle, which is a rectangle with rounded uh, ends with border radius. Uh, I, we have discussed this in the previous video. You can check out that. There's also mix. The mix function is responsible for the interpolation or something which we usually use in our other animated libraries. Use value is a skia value that is a place to store most of the component, most of the data while during the rendering or you could store the previous data when uh, the next data is being re-rendered or the next 
diagram is being painted on the screen. We have used shared value effect, which as we discussed, uh, and we have sweep gradient. I, I would use sweep gradient at certain point of this. For now, I'll just come in this out and show you how rounded rectangle would work when we have an animated value. <clears throat> so the component is animated play. We'll use a shared value. Uh, we'll use a skia value, which is x, and also shared value called progress. Now the progress value will be changed based on the progress dependency. And this will, with repeat, will take an animation. This animation is a timing which would go from 0 to 1, and the duration will be 2000, so a two, 2 seconds of animation. And I'll repeat this for three times. And the reverse is true, means the when reaching from one point to the other, the it would it would reverse back all the way to the start. And there's shared value effects. So the x will have a current value, which so the, the progress value will go from 30 to 256. So let's say the, the 0 is 30 and 2, 1 is 256, right? We could make this 0 and see what changes this brings in. And we'll change the, and now we have something that is animating. We have some a value that is changing over the time. And that is x. Now we have the power to make x, for example, here I'll make x as the width of the, uh, uh, of this progress bar. I'll define a color. Let's say the color being red. Okay. And you have kind of an animation on the screen, right? And because this was defined to be three, so th this animation is being repeated for three times. So with rounded rectangle, you would see a smoother animation, a progress bar going from one end to the other, expanding from one end to the other when I refresh the screen, just like this. Also, you could change the uh, x and y coordinates. At this point, because x is variable at this here, uh, you could change x. For example, this would uh, take the whole diagram and pull it from towards the x-axis, re-render, and you will see something like this happening on the screen. And you can do something similar with the y also. I'll set back x to 100. Now, to make this more interesting, I'll change the sweep gradient here. So the sweep gradient has a center at 50 and 200. Now, sweep gradient has a center and all the colors start from one end to and blend towards till the last. We'll, we'll change the color at this point. And now if you see, re-render, you'll see the rectangle, you see the rounded uh, rectangle being colored at each point going down to up. And because this has a sweep gradient at some point, this rectangle continues to have that sweep gradient uh, on it over the time. This does not have a constant color, which is interesting. Now, because we have this uh, rectangle starting to towards zero, we'll change this with starting the progress at 30. At 30, right? So this will create 30 height and 30 width, which will create a circle. So this will not be get back to a line at the start. This will create a circle at the start. Let's see. And there you see a circle right at the start of it. And that is it. That is it for the video. Thank you so much. Hope you like the series. And we hope to make a lot more over the time. If you like anything, do comment down below. If you have any questions, do comment down below. We'll meet in the next video. Thank you so much. Have a great day.